what up what up what up i appreciate y'all checking me out man oh boy oh boy are we gonna talk about some stuff today first though let me say this man going back and forth with, with people on youtube in the comment sections i thought twitter was a bad place YouTube is a horrible place, especially when we're talking about sports, because it's filled with. Here's the thing. When, when you when you in a space like Twitter or something like that, it's kind of hard to argue with a person's perspective, because normally they talking about personal feelings, personal feelings. However, if you sitting up and you talking with somebody about sports, about a basketball game that happened last night, a football game that happened last week. You cannot argue with what you see on the court. This is not it's not a matter of opinion after that. Really, it it, it start only turning into facts. So when ticket be cussing everybody out, calling y'all dumbasses and the ticket get he go crazy with it all right so when ticket is cussing y'all out i get it now when he get real aggressive i get it now because a lot of people only really seem to want to go by personal feelings the nostalgia a player gives you the nostalgia a team gives you or even passion just for uh for, for a team listen i'm a huge ravens fan huge ravens fan but i'm not oblivious to their issues on the field same with the detroit pistons i'm not oblivious to the fact that the pistons have a losing record but i also see what they made of out there too right I woke up this morning and I saw a trade rumor from Brian Windhorse. Not even a trade rumor. He is Brian Windhorse. He tweeted that the Lakers will consider trading Anthony Davis this uh, this offseason. And about a month ago, I made a, a video titled Dear Lakers Man, Dear Lakers Fans about how if we're going to trade Russell Westbrook, we need to look into trading Anthony Davis as well. Right? Everybody called me crazy. Everybody who love AD so much, they called me crazy. Everybody who love the Lakers so much, they called me crazy. How am I crazy? Are you watching the same thing that I'm watching out here? Are you realizing the reality of the situation as I'm realizing the reality of the situation? You know what? I was going to wait, but let's just do this now. They're talking about. Well, this is just what I've seen in the media. I've been watching a little bit of these idiots lately. These agenda pushers lately. These guys who then became spokesmen for the players. They in the players pockets. Anthony Davis for Carl Anthony Towns. Where? In what world? If I'm the Minnesota Timberwolves. There's no way I'm doing that trade right there. You got to imagine that the Timberwolves are pretty content with, 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 with what they have. Look at them. They in a better situation than the Lakers in. Some people, some people, there's an argument to be made that it's a better team than the Lakers have, with the exception of LeBron. I tell you what, you put Bron on the Minnesota Timberwolves, and uh, they are they are championship team. If you just take away, you can take away anybody. You could take away anybody but Carl Anthony Towns. 
But if you put him over there, that's a championship team all of a sudden. So some people, you know, or at least they're in the championship conversation. They, you, they got a, a fighting chance, all right? This Lakers team never really had a chance because they are so old. This is a young man's game. The Timberwolves are young, but they do have uh, the right amount of veteranship, the right amount of leadership over there. So if I'm so if I'm the Timberwolves, the Lakers gonna call me about Carl Anthony Towns, and I'm gonna laugh at him. I'm not gonna hang up on him. Be like, man, what you really wanted? What did you really call for? This can't be what you wanted, right? Some people consider Carl Anthony Towns, even in the, well, some people might consider Carl Anthony Towns the best shooting big man ever, just because he said it himself. But I also did a video talking about. Anthony's Dave Anthony Davis's value as a big man throughout the history of the league. And I can imagine that the Minnesota Timberwolves did they research on the guy too. I'm sure they know better than I do. So I couldn't see the Minnesota Timberwolves doing that. But I did come up with some possible trade destinations for him, right? Now, these are just, of course, hypothetical situations. These are the situations that made the most sense to me, i say. Or that could possibly make sense. Portland, all right? The Trailblazers. I think... I think the idea of Damian Lillard and Anthony Davis is refreshing. You dig? I think it's I think it's refreshing. I think that they they mean in the Lakers. I think they missed out on the opportunity to get CJ McCullum. I think the timing was off as far as pulling the trigger on the trade like that. Mostly because Anthony Davis is the big man over there. Like I know they got Dwight Howard, but obviously Dwight Howard is not the same Dwight Howard, and he don't really play over there. He don't get tick over there. Partially, probably because he's not the same Dwight Howard. Anthony Davis is one of the best big men in the league. Pairing him with Damian Lillard now is a good idea to me. You could have got C.J. McCollum and, again, the timing was off. Uh, some some of their young assets over there, maybe maybe even a pick. You probably could even got a pick out of that situation. They don't have the Lakers don't have any of the leverage, so that's gonna, that's another thing that made this list that I came up with kind of difficult. But. I still think that you could present Anthony Davis. The the problem is what do you get back? You don't get you don't get back what you fully need. Because again, you giving up that big man and Anthony Davis and you're not getting a big man. Nurkic? Could Nurkic could that work? Could Nurkic? Let's say they did like Nurkic, Anthony Simons and uh I don't know Eric Bledsoe or something would like to, would like would that be because it's the depth that you getting right, and then you also could trade Russell Westbrook and get additional pieces like whatever it is that you didn't get, right? Like you you I'm sure you could package THT and Russell Westbrook. THT would almost have to be included in a trade with Anthony Davis or Russell Westbrook because that's basically that pick. The issue is the salary. THT, I think, is $10 million. So that's not that bad. 
Plus, he does, he's young and he has upside. I, I don't want him, but, you know, maybe if you Portland and you getting Anthony Davis, THT, and you giving up uh, Nurkic, Anthony Simons, and I don't I don't know. They got some guy. They got some young pieces over there. Young, energetic, energetic pieces. Defensive pieces. Guys who can get buckets. Who know how to play as a team, as a unit. With a little bit of leadership, you might be all right. Lakers don't have no leadership right now. Right. So that's part of the issue. The issue was that you would expect. You would expect that the best player of all time would be able to provide leadership in some sort of way. Instead of just expecting people to come in and be able to play instantly. Right? Because every team, every organization got a way of doing things. Every superstar player has a preference on how they want things to be done. Every coach, right? There's different expectations. So, I don't know. Maybe Portland. Maybe maybe that's something that could be, you know, you could get something out of that, maybe. Uh, another team that I had in mind was Toronto. He could go over there and be the sixth guy, right? For, like, Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi. You feel me? I, I think that would be, I think that would be a good, you know. I think that would be a good little situation. Again, you got OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam, kind of players of the same mold. They have length. They have athleticism. They both can shoot. Maybe not the guys that you have to go to in that moment. Like, they're not the, the go-to guys. But Pascal, he I mean, hell, Pascal getting paid $36 million. So apparently Toronto, I mean, clearly Toronto saw something in him that would make them want to pay him that much. I, I think he worth the money. Am I saying that he's as good as Anthony Davis? I'm not saying that, but he is available. And we know that that should be your, your best asset being available. He is available. He is an all around guy. He plays defense. He plays hard. He's won a championship, so we, he know what to take. Same thing with OG Ananobi, right? I don't think that would be a bad move. I think that uh, I think that what's going on, and maybe you can get another guy. Uh, you can put THT in that deal, and maybe you could get another guy like a Chris Boucher, a Chris Boucher or uh, they got another guy over there I really like. I forget his name. I'm sorry. But it's another guy over there, a big guy. Oh, the precious, uh, precious out. Uh, I, I I can't pronounce his last name. Precious Outchiwa, Chiwa, or something like that. Hold on, let me get my man name right. I don't want to do him like that. But whatever the case may be, I do think that you could present that. What is it? What is this? What is this young brother's name, man? How do you pronounce it? Achua. Okay. Precious Achua. All right. He a dude that play hard too, man. Power forward, center. Um, he kind of small, but I do think that again, if we can do like a, if you could do like a, a, a OG on a Nobi, if we can somehow finesse him out of that deal, because it'll be a finesse at that point. Um, Well, maybe not because they do have Scotty Barnes. Like, Toronto is a team that I would be trying to, if I was, you know, of course they're going to send Anthony Davis where he want to go. They're going to make it one of them situations. But if I'm Bron and Clutch and, and Rich Paul, I'm trying to send Dog up north. And he can be the sixth guy up there. I, I, would, I think that's a pretty good situation. Let me, let, I don't know how it will work as far as the money. But I'll just say, let's just say, Precious Achiwa, Pascal Siakam, and OG Anano before Anthony Davis and Taylor Horton Tucker. That'll be all right. And then see if we can see if somehow 
you could get Malik Monk to come back. That'll that'll be straight. You could use again Russell Westbrook to try to get make up for other things that you might not have. I'll I say you keep Russell Westbrook at that point, but do, do that's a whole another conversation, right? Oklahoma was another team that I came up with. I think the problem with OKC is that they uh, team they just young and inexperienced. That's another team that got a lot of they got a lot of nice young players out there. They got picks, but that's not what Bron looking for. He won't plug and play guys. So you know maybe not that you you're not gonna get Shy Gill just off the deal because. Part of your pitch would be pairing Anthony Davis with whatever other star you might have on your team. Which leads me to the next team, Atlanta. I think Atlanta would be a good, a, a, a good, a suitable trade partner. Because we know John Collins, he been doing a little bit of whining over there. Talking about he'll get, he don't get enough shots. But I don't know how many shots he won't. You got maybe he trying to say that Trey Young take too many shots and he take too many wild shots or ill advised shots. But that's part of Trey Young's game. And John Collins is not a dude who he can't create his own shot. He can't create nothing down low. He ain't finna wiggle around down there and get nothing going. So maybe you could do, maybe you could do like Clint Capella. Maybe you could do Clint Capella and uh, and John Collins for Anthony Davis. I don't, you know, I I I think that's a pretty good, I think that's a pretty good trade. Let's just say straight up. I don't even need nothing else. Maybe if you the Lakers, you could try to get a pick just for the future. But I think the Lakers trying to find, they might be trying to find um, the future of L.A., like life after LeBron, right? Because we really don't know what, what he going to do next, especially if he adamant about playing with his son. So I don't know if you want to put the future of the Lakers in the hands of John Collins and Clint Capella. I think that's more of a help us win now type of deal so that brought me to the Bulls Chicago they are in jeopardy of losing Zach Levine he a free agent uh, this up and coming summer and he's going to get paid I think he only getting 26 million dollars right now alright Gary Harris is making as much money as that Right, I think Gary Harris is making twenty million dollars a year. So, Zach Levine is gonna want a payday. I can imagine he's looking at somewhere around thirty-five million. Right, I can imagine that's what he gonna want. So maybe you can work out some type of signing trade. Maybe you can do Zach Levine and Nikolai Vucevic for Anthony Davis. I would even take it a step further. I would try to get Patrick Williams out of that too. I would put THT. I go on let them have THT. AD and THT for Nikolai Vucevic, Zach Levine, and Patrick Williams. Maybe. I, people been talking about Anthony Davis going back to his hometown of Chicago. I think it'll be a little bit awkward over there with Lonzo Ball and Anthony Davis. But again, I don't know what type of relationship players be having off the courts for real. They might be best the best of buds. They might even both be represented by Clutch Sports. I have to look into that. We know that AD is. I, I can almost imagine that uh, that my man is too, Lonzo Ball. So I'm pretty sure they all good there. Maybe you can maybe you can do a sign and trade with Chicago. New York not a you know, I thought New York maybe that's just not a good New York garbage. Now I mean New York just garbage. Yeah. 
it's not a winning culture. So Anthony Davis going over there, I don't. I think the it would be like I don't even want to say it would be pressure on Anthony Davis. The Knicks fans done been through so much as Knicks fans. And then, like, how do you do that? Do you get Julius Randle back? I don't know. Julius Randle and LeBron, that's... Eh. Let's say you could do, like, uh, Julius Randle and I. Like, I, I would want Emmanuel quickly, too. Or even Mitch Robinson. Let's, let's say... But then, like, now New York, that's just... I can't imagine that's very appealing to New York. Having Julius Randle and Anthony Davis, what to together again? Didn't they play together before? I I, you know, I don't I don't remember. It seemed like they played together before. I know they both played with the Pelicans, but I can't imagine New York wanting to do that. I wouldn't want to give up Emmanuel quickly because Emmanuel quickly then kind of became a, he then kind of became a, a player's coach over there. And this dude, I think this is like second year in the league. This is another dude I got my eye on, and maybe maybe I'll do a video on, uh, separately about him. But Emmanuel quickly is not necessarily a dude that I would want to give up, especially not for uh, Anthony Davis. Not saying that. You feel, I, I ain't not trying to hold Anthony Davis out or nothing in in this particular situation, but it's just not as appealing. You know what I mean? Maybe if you can, if you the Knicks and you can keep Emmanuel quickly, but if I'm the Lakers, I would I will want him. I will want Emmanuel quickly out of that deal. I will want him and I will want Mitchell Robinson, which I believe he a free agent after this year, if I'm not mistaken. He on he on want a little bit of cheese too, actually. So I don't know. Maybe you could work. Maybe you could work something like that out. I don't know if that put the Lakers in win now mode. I think it give them a little bit a better chance to compete because they're getting depth and they're getting younger depth. They got depth now, but it's older depth. And again, this is a young this is a young man's game. Mitch Robb is an athletic rim protector. He don't provide much on the offensive end. But if you got an Emmanuel quickly uh, in that package, too, it probably could work. You probably could because, you know, Frank Vogel was out of there. They're going to try to find somebody. Maybe David Fisdale. Um, he might he might take that seat. But I'm hearing that they're trying to get Mark Jackson. Well, that would be interesting. But they're saying that the thing with Davis Fis David Fisdale is not really working out either. So that's going to be something interesting to keep your eye on. Nonetheless... Frank Vogel won't be there. Fogel. Fogel won't be with the Lakers. He he go sit on somebody's bench. So so maybe I don't know. I think a lot of it is going to depend on who they bring in as the head coach. And it's looking like the Lakers are already in shut the season down mode. I don't think Brown is going to play the next game against Dallas. So, like, that's pretty much like shut down mode, shut the season down. Let's go ahead and get ready for next year. I'm pretty sure they going through the list of coaches right now. Whatever the case may be, I think it's going to be either David Fisdale or Mark Jackson. And he going to need some fresh pieces to start with. All right. So New York might not be very good suitors. I think Orlando got pieces over there. Orlando got pieces over there. They don't have winners over there. They they don't have. <laughs> they got good young talent over there, though. I will say that. I think that. Like I, I can't really just put a trade package together i would really have to look at the numbers for real i don't think nothing like that will work though they got terrence ross they got mo bamba we know they got uh cole anthony we know they got jalen green jalen suggs i mean yeah jalen suggs not jalen green that's the dude from uh houston that i don't really like so they got jalen suggs they got 
Franz and Mo Wagner. Wagner, whatever it is. So they do have some pieces over there. Markel Fultz, if you want to uh, take that. But I don't, again, I don't think that's something that put Lakers in win now mode. Hey, speaking of win now. Oh, Utah was another team I kind of came up with. I think the thing with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert is coming to a head. I think that's going to end soon. If not this offseason, maybe they'll give it another season. I think them trading Joe Ingles was indicative of them making change. It's like the writing, of the writing on the wall type of deal, right? Dwayne Wade, he has ownership in the team now, and I can imagine that he giving a lot of his uh, ideas his little his little ideas, you know, about the direction of the team. And we know that him and Donovan Mitchell probably got a pretty good relationship. We know that Donovan Mitchell is the future. He is the Utah Jazz, right? So maybe you can try to get Rudy Gobert from the Utah Jazz for Anthony Davis. Maybe you can try to get like a uh, like a Jordan Clarkson and a and a Rudy Gobert, I think those two really good pieces to get in return for Anthony Davis. If you the Lakers, maybe you can see what you can get from them. I I would need Bogdanovich too though. I would need Bogdanovich. I would need something else. Royce O'Neal. I would need something else. I would need I would need Rudy Gobert, Mike Conley, or Jordan Clarkson, and a third. Just a third. Just a guy. Just a person. And if you want, I'll give you THT. If you want them. And then like whatever you whatever the case may be, what the Lakers need to do. Cause I, I these are again, these just trade scenarios that I could think of myself i don't know nothing else that would work for both parties whatever the case may be i think the lakers should get rid of anthony davis before they get rid of russell russell westbrook the reason being you trade anthony davis and you get the most out of that trade we know that they shopped russell westbrook already didn't really get a lot of offers russ is Got a really bad contract. Don't nobody really want to deal with. So you trade your best piece first. And get what you're going to get out of that. And then you turn around. And fill in the rest of the roster. With a Russell Westbrook trade. That's going to be the best. That's going to be the best thing. That the Lakers can do for real. Trade Anthony Davis first. Get what you're going to get. Kind of your centerpiece. Your cornerstone players. And then fill in, cause you're gonna get you're gonna have to get a bunch of bullshit back for Russ. You're gonna have to get a bunch of bullshit back for Russ. You just you're gonna have to ship Russ in the form of a salary dump. I think Russ got a player option though. <laughs> so you so you gonna have to you gonna have to ship him in a form of a salary dump, basically. You're gonna have to present him like that to another team. Just to kind of shine them up, make it look pretty. I, I don't think there's nothing wrong with Russ. I think Russ still got plenty left in the tank. I think he'd a scapegoat for that team. I'm not saying that he's playing the best or he has played the best, but I believe that he is. I mean, he's clearly the second best player on that team because Anthony Davis don't even play. Anthony Davis don't got an MVP. Anthony Davis never averaged a triple double. If you gonna tell me that Russell Westbrook stat line is useless then what the fuck do you call anthony davis that line speaking of stat lines though i wanted to talk a little bit about stacking the deck <laughs> stacking the deck Meaning having three or more superstars on the team. I think that historically stacking the deck 
has been a failure. As far as win percentage, championship win percentage. I heard Philly was trying to get Bradley Bill. I hear that it's a deal in place. Bradley Bill will do a sign and trade with the Wizards. Probably get like a max contract. And he'll be traded, excuse me, to the 76ers, right? For Tyrese Maxey and uh, Tobias Harris. Um First off, let me say that I think that Washington will win, will win that trade because you're getting you getting back a consistent player, nice efficient player in Tobias Harris. You getting back one of the next up and coming guards in Tyrese Maxey. I'm very high up on Tyrese Maxey. You got Porzingis already over there. You got Corey Kispert. You got Rui Hachimura, whatever you, however you pronounce the Japanese man name, the Japanese black guy. You have, I mean, you got pieces over there. You got Daniel Gafford. They got pieces over there. So I think that if they trade Bradley Beal and get Tobias Harris and Tyrese Maxey out the deal, which I would want Matisse Thybul too. I would definitely try to get Matisse Thybulle. Washington got Kyle Kuzma too. I just thought about it. KCP. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They will win that trade for sure. Part of the reason Philly would uh, would lose the trade is because they decided to stack the deck. Right? Three superstars. Joel Embiid, James Harden, uh, and Bradley Beal. And then you got Doc Rivers over there. You have an underwhelming coach. You have Joel Embiid, who is, when healthy, the second most dominant player on the court behind Giannis Antetokounmpo. Second. Um, but, he, you know, he made out of porcelain, right? So you got that guy. You got Bradley Bill, who's never done anything. You have a, a, a very underwhelming coach in Doc Rivers. Throughout his history in the NBA, Doc Rivers has not been a good coach. If you disagree, we can talk about it. Tyron Lue is a better coach than him, and I believe he coached Tyron Lue. I would take Tyron Lue. We could talk about it if you want to, but that ain't what this is about. We're talking about this recipe for disaster because I haven't even mentioned James Harden yet. Oh, we finna talk about James Harden. They also mentioned that Carmelo Anthony would either, he's going to leave the Lakers. He'll either play with Philly or he'll play with the Nets. I believe he'll go to the Nets. Um, I think that. Him and Philly wouldn't work. Him and James Harden together won't work. We we know that already. We we seen that we seen that story. Which is kind of why I'm doing this. Now that I think about it, I I got a I got a really really big problem with these 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 superstars, these diva ass niggas. I got a big problem with these dudes. These dudes who demand so much. You need to play with this player. You need to play with that player. Oh, it didn't work. Now I want to play with this player and that player. Oh, I'm just going to leave the team all together. And I'm going to go play with other great players. And that's not going to work either. We done seen it way too many times. I got a problem with these type of players. James Harden is one of these type of players. All right. He's one of these diva type of dudes, man. And he paying, you being paid way too much money. And that's, a, that's why I got respect on Russ, 
as much as I do because he Russ just take it all to the chin. He just want to go out there and hoop. It's evident. It's evident. Russ don't want to do nothing but go out there and hoop. Every night he going to go out there and hoop. He's not going to complain. He didn't came over here to L.A. and he just been one one criticism after the next. And he been taking it all to the chin. He ain't rolled nobody under the bus. They asked him what the issue was. He, he said we need to win. And he right. If they was winning, nobody would have anything to say. But they not winning, so they're looking for somebody to blame. And like Russ said, he's one person. That's a whole team over there that's garbage. So I got respect on Russ. Even somebody like Damian Lillard. I, as much as I love Dame and respect Dame, he's not exactly a diva. But I think he got a, a lot of audacity to be irritated. I don't think he got the right to be irritable and irritated over there. Number one, you in Portland. Who wants to play in Portland? Like who really? I, th I think I think the Pistons might make a trade. Uh, I think they might get Jeremy Grant over there. I think he might want to go there. Uh, allegedly. I don't know how much truth is in that. But like who? Because he from there. But other than that, who want to just go to Portland? Nobody want to just go to Portland. Yeah, in order to be in Portland, you got to be homegrown. The, tra the, the tradition of the Trailblazers is not like they still in a rose garden. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's different. It's a different fan base, a different feel over there, a different vibe, a different team style. So that's a homegrown. You know, they might be in good position now, but Damian Lillard got a lot of audacity. Because you are not able to, you and Dame, you and CJ McCollum, y'all wasn't able to uh, carry them nowhere. And you the man over there. This is your team. This is your team. Again, I'm, I'm not so much talking about Damian Lillard, but he's not excluded. You got a lot of audacity to be frustrated over there. Again, you never you he ain't never even won an MVP. Has he ever even won a scoring title? You know what I'm saying? But well, let's talk about James Harden, oh man, because that's this is the point that I'm getting to. You know, a, a player's greatness to me is defined by how many of the moments they captured. You have the C's the moment you got to grasp you got to catch the moment you got to that's what made mike the goat whenever there was an opportunity he seized it if it was a shot that they needed he took it he made it if it was a defensive play they needed he made it if it was a pass he made it it's the same thing with with lebron's uh career his legacy he he while he hasn't seized every opportunity he always made the best out of what he had i i say that i give him that he's all he's he's always made the best out of what he had i ain't gonna break him down like how i'm about to do james harden because lebron deserved more respect than that right James Harden is a dude who under the spotlight, boy, oh boy. All oh, the things that I learned about James Harden today is really kind of crazy. Do look, do look funny. He look real funny under the spotlight. And yes, I'm about to share some of these things with you. All right. I'm sharing these things with you to let you know why. That situation in Philly won't work, meaning they won't win a championship. Right. This this is the whole purpose of me breaking down James Harden, how I'm about to do him. All right. Throughout James Harden's career in the playoffs. He has three games 
where he shot two for 11. James Harden been in the league for a while, so you would think uh, three games, no big deal, right? It's three games throughout his whole, how many times has he whoop de whoop de whoop Let me give you the breakdown of James Harden through 137 playoff games. Eleven of these games, he shot 18% or below. 23 of these games, he shot 29% or below. 54 of these games, he shot 38% or below. And he had 19 points or less in 51 of these games. I'm just I'm just scratching the surface. I'm I'm just getting warmed up. The final appearance that he had with OKC now he was coming off the bench. I will give him that. He had to play third fiddle to Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. I'll give him that. It's very hard for me to give him that after I read off this stat line. But I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to let him have it. 12.4 points per game. 4.8 rebounds per game. 3.6 assists per game. 37.5% field goal percentage. 31.8% three-point percentage. In games one, three, and four, this man averaged seven points per game, five rebounds per game, and 3.6 assists per game. He shot a combined six of 26 in those games, those three games, six for 26. That brings him to a staggering 23%. He shot two for 11 from downtown at a whopping 18%. And that's with 32 minutes per game. All right. All right. What about the next year? James Harden got his trade to OKC. Or did he leave in free agency? Can't remember. Don't matter. It's all just history now. He averaged 26 points per game. 6.7 rebounds per game. 4.5 assists per game. Now mind you, he the man. This is his team. This is his team. All right? Four and a half turnovers per game. 39% field goal shooting. 34% three-point shooting. He shot 37% or less in four out of those six playoff games that he played that first year in Houston. He shot 16% from downtown in the first four games of that series. Let me tell you what else happened in that series. He had a game where he had 15 points, one rebound, and three assists. But he did have a double-double with 10 turnovers. All right? He shot 4 for 12 in that game. 0 for 4 from the three-pointer. Surprisingly, Houston won that game. All right. Who won that game, though? It damn sure wasn't James Harden. And it wasn't Dwight Howard because Dwight Howard didn't get there until that next year. Where they met Portland in the first round. Dwight averaged 26 points and 14 rebounds. 
All right. Now, I didn't even write James Harden stats down because when I looked into this, I learned that James Harden was the fourth best player in that playoff series behind Dwight Howard, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Damian Lillard. He disappeared in the spotlight. Which is what I expect him to do with Philly. But I got one more situation for you. Well, <laughs> I got six more. If you want me to keep it real, I got six more of these situations for you. James Harden playoff situations, right? And they all consecutive. But I just stick to, I just give you one more, right? The conference finals in 2015 against Golden State. Game three of that series, that man shot three for 16 and he had 17 points, right? Game five. He had 14 points. He shot 2 for 11 from the field, 0 for, for 3 for downtown, and he had a double-double with 12 turnovers. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's, a, that's the most turnovers in a playoff game in NBA history. Yeah, game 5, 14 points, 12 turnovers. If, not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Steph Curry got injured in that series. Your man's is funny under the light. So he's one of these dudes who run around team hopping, player hopping, switching organizations. Look how, look how that man left the Houston Rockets. He got everything he asked for over there. He got the money. He got the coach. He got the system designed around him. Look at the situation he left the man over there. They are not returning to playoff series to no playoffs, no time soon. They'll be right up there. They'll be right there with the Thunder in a rebuild phase. They'll be right there with the Thunder. Houston, he left Houston a mess. He damn near left Brooklyn a mess. Brooklyn got good value back for James Harden, but he almost left them a mess. And again, I got five more. I got five more scenarios here, man, where 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 James Harden then choked when the pressure was at its highest. I don't even want to say its highest. So I don't know, man. How much help is enough help? I don't really know. Anyway, though, man, that's just me giving y'all my 10 cents, man. I ain't really got nothing else. I'll talk to y'all another time. Peace.